So, from the Police Academy to the Joke Academy, some of Britain's brightest alternative comedians are on their feet now for stand-up. the holy vengeance of Islam and with the salutations of Muhammad, I abjure all Muslims to take up the sword of Akhla and destroy all of those associated with the obscene and blasphemous book Fly Fishing by J.R. Yeah. Harbury. <laughs> Dyslexia. What a hard word to spell. <laughs> <laughs> Dream that up then. Has a poor old dyslexic meant to carry on with that? <laughs> What's that thing you've got, mate? Dib lovely hub. <laughs> There's a sign in show business. You can play in the Granada TV studios twice in your career. Once on the way up, once on the way down. It's good to be back. <laughs> Did anybody go and see when Harry met Sally? Yeah, I was, I was going to go and see it, but like there was this huge queue, so I faked an orgasm myself and saved five quid. <laughs> now, I don't know actually if you noticed this when I came on, because a lot of people say this about me. You know, you looked at me and you thought, that woman's a bit of a fashion goddess, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I think so, because, you know, I fall into that group of women who are euphemistically labelled by the fashion industry as revolting, obese lepers. And, um, <laughs> we're kind of destined to wander around the streets, tearing our hair out and eating quite a lot of cakes, I might add. Um, <laughs> until we come across an Evans outside shop. But, um, I actually, I went to a fashion show recently because I wanted to see how, how thin the models really were. And they're like that, aren't they? You know, I tried to do my little bit. bit. Uh, I took some cakes along, shoved them in through the bars. But, you know, they weren't very grateful. And, in fact, one of the models bit my finger off. I had the last laugh, though, because when I looked it up in my Weight Watchers calorie counter book, 7,000 one of my fingers. So, um... Uh, <laughs> She'll be fat and spotty very soon. Hooray. By the way, there was a man on television um, not so long ago called Harry Enfield. He was one of my heroes. And Harry Enfield, I don't know if you ever noticed this, he had a brilliant catchphrase. He went on telly every week and he went, loads of money, like that, didn't he? Every week. And the irony was, that's all he did, and he got loads of money. He just went, loads of money, and he got loads of money. I'm going to go on telly next week and say, I want a blowjob. <laughs> It's funny how, um, how class is still with us, like, because it is, because like, if I'm ever talking to, like, an upper-class woman or upper-middle-class woman, I just feel so unsexy. Like, I, I try, I do my best, I try and carry on the conversation, trying to be sophisticated and stuff, and I can just feel myself turning into a World War II greengrocer. Like, my hair flattens down into a brilliantine centre parting, and I, and I sprout this over with loads of pens in the breast pocket. <laughs> well, I'm doing my best, I'm saying things like, uh, yeah, I think it's very interesting what you've been saying about David Lynch. Um, do you want to dance? <laughs> no, sorry, actually, I'm going to use John T. C. Beck Monty Fury. Ah. Oh. oh, what's happening to me? Oh. Well, never mind. I'll save you our best lettuces as always, Lady Bufton. And how is Lord Bufton tough enough at the manor? If I may be so bold as to ask about some noble of personage. And of course, our youngest daughter Janet is taking piano lessons, and we're hoping to send her to the municipal polytechnic soon. And, oh, it's getting worse. Oh, God. I'd like to get my her, her hands on your twin Pepper Peaks, Nurse Gladys. <laughs> they say men have trouble and difficulty talking about their emotions and stuff, and it's crap. We don't talk about our emotions, we mime. It's a whole different kind of language. You ask a man how he's feeling about you, you're likely to get... <laughs> what? Oh, nothing. <laughs> uh, they say that men think with their dicks. Crap. But men without foreskins be more circumspect. <laughs> You see, one thing that makes uh, men violent is football, isn't it? They love a good rumble down the old footy. 
And you see, women aren't violent because women's football, well, it hasn't got off the ground really yet, has it? But it will. One reason it hasn't got off the ground is because men are very derisive about it. You know, I think they just assume the woman pops the ball in her handbag <laughs> and gets her husband to drive her up to the goal on the way to the shops or something. <laughs> And actually, women's football is pretty impressive. You should watch it. I made a male friend of mine sit down and watch some the other day, and he was very impressed by the standard of play until right near the end, when one of the women headed the ball into her own goal and burst into tears. <laughs> and my friend said to me, that's just so typical of a woman. <laughs> he did, but strangely enough, you know, he didn't say that when Gaza had a good boo-hoo-hoo in the World Cup. <laughs> Uh, there was no trouble at the World Cup, which means that uh, English fans are back in Europe again. But something that they don't understand on the continent is that you don't mean to get into trouble when you go abroad. It just sort of happens. Like, I, I always get into trouble when I go to France. And, like, not out of intent. It's for the pure and simple reason that I was taught to speak French via Longman's audiovisual French. <laughs> like, I wasn't sus this first time I went to France. It was like, excuse moi monsieur. Où est la gare Saint-Lazare, s'il vous plaît? Ah oui, c'est très facile, mon petit, on allait que tout droit. Excusez-moi, monsieur. Où est la gare Saint-Lazare, s'il vous plaît? Oui, comme j'ai dit, on allait que tout droit et ping! Ping! Another hero of mine has been Frankie Howard. I think he's one of the best comedians ever to have lived. And I'll tell you why, because I actually went to see him a few weeks ago and he does nothing. He just comes on, and I'll do a bit of an impression here. He just comes and goes, Oh, ladies and gentlemen, now, oh, now don't sit up there. Yes, oh, now, no, look at, yeah, walking down the road, right, yes, and oh, no, 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 right down the back, for three and a half hours. <laughs> and he only tells one joke. One joke, he went, Oh, half a pound of bacon, please. Half a pound of bacon, lean back. Half a pound of bacon, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's genius. <laughs> No, I say it's a cruel world. I say it's a cruel world, but some people have a good life. Salman Rushdie, he's a lucky bloke, isn't he? I envy Salman Rushdie. I do. Because whatever happens to him, no one in that man's life is ever going to be able to say to him, here, yeah, don't you think you're being a bit paranoid, mate? I'm also here tonight, actually, to talk about my favourite topic, which I have to say is violence. <laughs> no, it is. Because I'm not averse to a good punch-up myself, especially at the January sales. <laughs> now, I don't actually buy anything, I just go around hitting people, because um, I think it serves them right, really. And you see, that's one thing, actually, that I like about women, is that when you get women together in a big group, even if they're a bit pissed, on the whole, they don't tend to be violent. But I have to say, actually, I changed my mind recently when I watched the last Tory party conference because there they all were. All these old bats from Surrey <laughs> baying for the death penalty. And it actually made me think, you know, you can divide women that vote Tory into two groups, really. You've got the sort of 65-year-old battle axe who's married to a retired pit bull terrier. <laughs> And then you've got the ones I really hate. They're the young women that vote Tory because they model themselves on Princess Diana same two CSEs. <laughs> Anorexia and crass stupidity, if you want to know what they are. Oh, good Lord, we've got a load of royalists in tonight, haven't we? <laughs> Hooray. Or have we got a big group of sociologists at the back going, no, you can't do that, you can't split them into two broad groups like that, it's not on. <laughs> so I always say, all right, then, there is actually something that all women that vote Tory do have in common. And that's that they all deserve a good kick in the fanny from me. But, uh... Today's Labour Party changing the world by going, oh dear, oh law. But... <laughs> Music's no good, I know, in the 90s. I feel very violated. It's like all my very favourite records have been stolen by TV advertisers to make dumb products look hip and trendy on television. Like Marvin Gaye, Jimi Hendrix and stuff. I've only got a couple of records left. But I don't see them advertising sherry with too drunk to bonk by the dead Kennedys, so... <laughs> Shampoo and conditioner. Take two bottles into the shower. Piss off. <laughs> I love the hate and the venom that man gets into his tone of voice for these disgusting, sick and degraded outlaws who do that sort of thing. It's like... Shampoo and conditioner. 
take two bottles into the shower, <laughs> get my mother to have sex with a donkey, <laughs> Now, I have to tell you something else about myself, actually. Um, I'm not married. Surprise, surprise, eh? And uh, to be honest, at 33, I'm getting desperate now. <laughs> what I'd actually love to do is I'd love to go on blind date just to really piss the bloke off when the screen went back. It'd be great, wouldn't it? Hi. I, uh, I recently split up with my girlfriend and uh, I still don't understand what it's all about. I asked her why and she said, you are completely immature, period. And I said, <laughs> period. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to spend a lot more time on my own now, and, which is a bummer because I always get more self-conscious on my own, it, particularly in the high street. Like, I don't know if this ever happens to you, but sometimes I'm just walking down the high street and you suddenly find yourself walking stride for stride, level with an old lady. So, like, you speed up so people won't think your best friend is someone who owns a tartan zip-up shopping trolley. <laughs> like, she's sped up as well because she's frightened of you, so you both end up bombing neck and neck down the road at 30 miles an hour. I've just been out with an old flame, Ulrike, my uh, little German dentist. Oh, it was five years ago she fixed my crown. Took her out for a drink that same night. Gee, seeing her again has brought back all those old feelings. My gosh. Mmm, mmm. if she is. So what? This Domestos multi-surface cleaner has superb cleaning power. Now I've heard that before. Yeah, but this is different. Unlike some other cleaners, it'll leave her kitchen germ-free. Like I said, we're history. Germ-free? Dah, she won't use it down here on the floor. Uh, oh, oh, ah! Domestos multi-surface cleaner leaves your home not just clean, but hygienically clean. Us germs aren't safe anywhere now. Jokes. <laughs> Joke number one, what do you get if you cross a Rottweiler with Lassie? A dog that savages you and then runs for help. <laughs> <laughs> Joke number two, what's the difference between a cab driver and a Scottish goalkeeper? Cab driver won't let five in. <laughs> Think about that one. I've gone a bit casual now. I'd like to talk about my background. <laughs> it's nice to know they let an elephant in <laughs> to ejaculate on the backdrop. Now, actually, I'll tell you the sort of bloke I really hope I don't end up with. It's the kind of bloke that goes around pretending to be a bit of a feminist when he's not. I think you know the sort I mean. Cosmo man, I call him. <laughs> He's the man of the 90s, though. He's intelligent, sensitive, caring, well-read. What a boring old bastard he must be, eh? <laughs> but, you know, we shouldn't be rude about him because, of course, he is incredibly right on. His car isn't penis-shaped. <laughs> Unfortunately, neither is his penis, so... Um, <laughs> don't bother. That's all I'm saying. And sex is dangerous in the 90s as well, because, like... You're not just going to bed with the person who you want to go to bed with. You're going to bed with all the people who they've been to bed with. <laughs> they're not just going to bed with you, they're going to bed with all the people that you've been to bed with. I go, sounds a bit like group sex on a first day. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I'm just not going to make coffee for that many people. <laughs> but it can be safe. <clears throat> just so long as you go to bed with people that you wouldn't normally associate with promiscuity. Like, extremely old people. <laughs> People who've been in a coma since 1943. <laughs> Hideous people. Who drool and carry all their belongings in a Tesco bag. When I was a child, when I was about, I don't know, eight years old, 
There's a man called Danny Kay. I don't know if you remember. Unfortunately, he died last year. He went and he's dead and he's gone. That's the end of it, right? <laughs> but I always remember he used to sing a record called There Was... What, sorry, Once Was an Ugly Duckling. And he used to go on it. He used to go, There Once Was an Ugly Duckling, his feathers all stubby and torn like that. And what did that duckling turn into? Swan! Load of bollocks. <laughs> so duckling turns into a duck. <laughs> Does. Sing it ends up as a swan. <laughs> Danny Kay, deserve the die. <laughs> you know, I've been talking about the news a bit, and I think that we watch the news on telly, and we read the papers, and we know that 99% of the time, we're not getting the truth. But I think the big problem is that that sort of attitude is sort of filtered down to people in their normal social life, and none of us bother to tell the truth anymore. Because you know what it's like when someone phones you up you haven't seen for ages, and they say, how are you? You always say, oh, I'm fine. Well, what you'd really like to say is, well, I um, had an abortion two months ago. I just had laser treatment for cervical cancer. Got pissed out my head on cheap cooking sherry last night because I'm so lonely. And I haven't had a decent shag for ages. Dad. Um, Because it's about time Dad knew, isn't it? I think so. I think he'd like it. So this is my new policy in life, telling the truth. And it's going down remarkably well in some areas, not so well in others. Uh, I made the very serious mistake the other night of phoning up my local cab firm, North London Liars. And um, <laughs> it's a bit unfair, really, because I'm telling them the truth. I'm telling them exactly what I expect. Now, I rang them up the other night and said, can you send round a big, fat, racist bastard, please? <laughs> with a personal hygiene problem <laughs> sometime before I have my menopause and um, it hasn't actually arrived yet so I don't know what's going to happen there. I'm still on the duck motif. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed this but uh, a little bit later when I was about 10 um, I went to grammar school twice and I was a posh kid and we used to have a telly and I used to watch Donald Duck on the television and I don't know if you've noticed this but every time Donald Duck has a bath he wraps a towel around his middle like that. And I thought in my childhood innocence, he's trying to hide up his private parts. Tail around the middle, hide up the private parts, obvious. Then he goes off, he goes into a bathroom, sits in the bath, sings a hideous song, comes out, and what's he do? He puts on a jacket, then only comes down to there. <laughs> there is a bit of South North resentment in the world. I, it's, I don't think it's very nice. You know, when I first moved up to Sheffield, there was a bit of resentment. People have a stereotyped idea of you, because you come from the South. People would say to me, you know, they think you're rich and all that. People would say to me, Oh, I. <laughs> From London, are you? <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Anyone here from Tatford? Yeah. Just lived home. <laughs> Anyone here from, uh... Anyone here from Oldham, by the way? Yeah. yeah. Got a ten pound bicep of a house. <laughs> I do like living in the north, but there is a big cultural divide. There's a big cultural difference between the south and north in Britain. And the main difference is that the further north you move in Britain, the more unwilling people are to accept the idea that it's freezing. <laughs> freezing. Because, you know, it's like a shameful secret. Oh, we're moving a bit further north, gets a little bit colder. You know, it's, oh, you know, here we are, we have a few, few hundred miles north, it's a few degrees colder. I know, but don't tell bastard southerners. <laughs> As if we won't notice if no-one tells us, you know, because I, I can always spot a fellow southerner in the north because it's this time of year, it's very cold outside, we're wearing coats. <laughs> Cockney perverts. <laughs> Obviously, because there's the local lads, Friday night, down the pub, underpants. <laughs> <laughs> and the producer said to me, <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, Ronnie, as he does, you know, quite often. <laughs> he, says, he said to me, Ronnie, he said, Ronnie, 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 Ronn
This isn't the joke which we've been doing every week for 22 years of the Turonis. And have you noticed, have you noticed over those 22 years of the Turonis that one of my nostrils is 10 times the size of the other one? <laughs> Well, it's sad for many people I was the only true uh, James Bond, and there is currently a campaign afoot uh, to have me uh, reinstated as uh, James Bond, although there may be a few problems caused because of my age. OK, 007, what you do is you strap yourself in this seat, press the button, and the whole thing just takes off. I seek you and uh, what's it called? It's a Ronco stair lift. <laughs> but now I think, ha-ha, Northerners, what are you going to do with this global warming, then? And everywhere's all boiling hot all the time. What are you going to do then with all this macho, I'm not bloody cold business? What are you going to do when it's warm all the time? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? i start pretending it's not warm. <laughs> That's it, you're going to be going out. It's 90 degrees, fur coats. <laughs> warm, warm. You call this warm, you Nesh Southern puff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nesh Southerner. Yeah, don't know what bloody warm is. Warm, warm, I'm freezing. Mother, give us another scarf. I'm running <laughs> Those are red, violets are blue, I'm dyslexic, so there was it. And, you know, cos I'm not married, I have to tell you, I just don't have anything to do all day. It's very boring. I don't have any shirts to iron. <laughs> do I have any dinners to cook? And I don't even have any underpants to read, so I'm very bored indeed. <laughs> and I've had to get myself rather a lot of hobbies, to be honest. And one thing I think is needed in this country is a decent agony aunt, really, don't you? Because they're rubbish, aren't they? Mm. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be a down-to-earth, pragmatic agony aunt. That's what I'm going to be. And I've been practicing, and I'm going to start with a, with a problem I found in the news of the world, actually. So we'll all have to step down the old evolutionary ladder a bit to understand it, but see what you think. This one says, Dear Unity, whenever I put on my daughter's slimline Wellington boots, I get very sexually excited. Is this wrong? <laughs> I'm 52 and recently widowed. Well, you see, what Unity actually says in reply is, no, it's not wrong, but it would be better to find yourself a new man because a man is much more fun than a Wellington boot. <laughs> Well, Unity, I'm afraid I beg to differ there. <laughs> and I think that's that one sorted out, isn't it? Fine. Now, I've got a couple here as well from my favourite mag, which is Weekend magazine, which is superb. You must read it, because the people that write in are balmy. <laughs> Completely. Like this one here. Dear David, I am a police constable. That's not actually the problem. It does go on after that. Um, <laughs> Dear David, I am a police constable, and following an affair with a woman police constable, I have a very painful swelling in my testicle. <laughs> well, all I have to say to that, really, is good. <laughs> and that's that one sorted as well, isn't it? Fine. Now, this final letter is my favourite. I have to say, I love this letter, because this man, <coughs> he's had it, really, uh, up top. Because he wrote in and said, Dear you did... Not dear Unity, dear David, sorry. He wrote in and said, Dear David, I was very upset by the answer you gave to a woman from Grimsby last week, saying she had vaginal thrush. Grimsby is a respectable town. <laughs> and we most certainly do not have venereal diseases here. Well... I was actually doing a gig in Grimsby not so long ago, and I can reassure you now that they do, so... Uh, <laughs> that's all right, isn't it? Right, um, I've got to shoot off fairly soon. I'd like to say thank you. You've been lovely, really, and thank you uh, for not heckling me, because, you know, I get heckled a, a fair bit, really, being the size of an offshore oil rig. Um, <laughs> I must have heard F off fatty at least 200 times today. Um, <laughs> And I am currently collecting a list of my favourite heckles, because you get some great ones, you know. I think the strangest one I've had to date is Show Us Your Knob. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> but actually, the one that, the one that I like best, because it was very sweet, really. I went on at a club once and said, Good evening, you're a nice little crowd. And someone shouted out, Yes, so are you. So, um, <laughs> from one nice little crowd to another, thanks very much for listening and good night. Thank you.